Okay, welcome back to Tabletop 24. We're back on the UK GE show floor. We're with Benji from Osprey Games. Um, we've got a great lineup here this weekend. We do. Um, we do. We'll, we'll get to this thing behind us in a second. So, cover that up. Yeah, we'll cover that up. But let, let's talk um, the other big news. Yeah. Cryptid. Yep. Nominated. Yeah. Cryptid was nominated for the Kenish Builder Yaris Award. I say nominated. Nominated and now shortlisted. Yes. Um, our fingers are crossed. It's a huge deal for us. Like, yeah. That is the one of the biggest accolades in tabletop gaming um and it's for the expert game of the year like that is a really really big deal for us um Cryptid is one of our like near and dear games like um i met hal duncan of ruth beavers this weekend for the first time ever and i got to like i got to give them a hug and be like oh thank you so much for this thing like it, it was a big deal because we've got uh, Crypto Urban Legends that we're demoing here. Um, it's launched uh, a few weeks ago. I mean, timing couldn't be better. I know, right? <laughs> we, we genuinely had no plan for this whatsoever. So we were working with uh, Skellic Games who did the translation of Cryptid. So it was eligible for the German awards because Cryptid came out in 2018. Mm -hmm. So, but it's eligible based on the German print. So yeah. that coming out, it's been a great boost for them. It's been a great boost for the game. We've had loads of people interested in Urban Legends because it's instead of just being an expansion pack there's a million expansion packs here at the show mm. urban legends is a standalone like spiritual sequel yeah. so we've had a lot of people interested because they've been wanting a two-player experience yeah and the one thing i'm incredibly surprised at was the box size yeah it's yeah. it's it, and it looks like it gives a similar experience yeah, yeah it's like you say spiritual yeah. successor in a way it's not the same game yeah it's a two-player version yeah but yeah, the, the, I mean, the footprint that it's on yep. and, and that two-player engagement, it looks yeah. fantastic. It's a, it's a good pocket game. Like, mm. I, I don't like to say the word pub game too much, but it's got that, like, I'm going to put it in a bag, we'll take it to a con exactly like this. Like, it's perfect to, to get out and have that kind of thinky experience, but on a small form factor. Yeah, yeah. so, and it's not just those. This is this is a big weekend for you guys, it isn't is it? It is a big weekend. So, Crescent Moon. Yes. I mean, my my demo tables, we've had... We've had Crescent Moon demos just absolutely round. We had to put out more tables because we had so many people booking in slots. And it's not a small game either. It's not no, short. No, 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 it's not. In fact, we weren't sure how we were going to be able to demo it because it's a, it's a big, it's a big juicy game. Mm. Crescent Moon is like a big 180 minute game. Um, it's a four to five player asymmetric game. So for players who love their asymmetry from things like Root or Dune, this, this is our, our entry into that foray. Um, players all with uh, asymmetric factions that have different objectives. They've all got uh, different abilities. And there's this kind of negotiation with it that we really wanted to get to the table. Like, the game isn't just about what the mechanics are doing, it's also about what the players want to do to negotiate, which means that a show like this, it's great because people actually get to interact with people rather yeah. than just interacting with what the cardboard's doing. They're able to make deals and sort of vie for power back and forth. And very different at an experience like this where you may be sitting down with one or two friends, not five friends. Yeah. So you're sitting down with essentially complete strangers that yeah. may interact completely different to how you get it back when you get your gaming group in place. Yeah. So, and for people who've spent the last few years playing games, maybe just with two people, it's really nice, I think, to get back out to a big convention get a lot of people around the table. And I think people are wanting to have those bigger, like fuller experiences again. Yeah, yeah, and it, that's uh, fantastic. And it is, I think it's got a lot of buzz around it and yeah. it's a really nice title. It's really lovely to look in and, and everything like that. But like you say, it's crunchy. Just just the cover alone, like the foiling on the cover yeah. gets me every time. Yeah. Oh. It's, it's oh. great. Um, so obviously we can see just, just to our right, we've got Undaunted. We've got North Africa. We've got reinforcements. I have got some copies. I've got some copies here. I'm very <laughs> precious of them. But what else have we got? Well, we've got a big exciting thing that we don't always do. Um, in our glass cabinet behind, I have one of the three existing prototypes of Undaunted Stalingrad. Um, this is our biggest Undaunted release. We wanted to get it out so that we could do sneak previews to people, people could see it. I've only had it out the glass cabinet properly uh, twice over the weekend. Once for press event and just once for live TV. Um, it's a big beast of a game. It basically is going to be like, it, like I am nervous about it, just talking about it. Because <laughs> uh, Undaunted is a really exciting product for us. Like the idea of having a war game combined with like a deck builder has really like scratched an itch of people that they didn't know that they had. So we've been sort of developing that to try and take that game into new places, do new things with it. So. We added vehicles, uh, we added the solo play and the four play. So we were trying to see what we could do next. And that big, exciting experience is Stalingrad. Stalingrad is this big, resettable legacy game. It's got branching campaigns. It's got a big, thick book filled with story. The story changes and evolves as you play. So as, this, as you go through the scenarios, 
what your actions are in the game, they are impacted. Uh, uh, they impact the game for each scenario. So your locations are going to change depending on what happens in your game, and that's going to have ramifications further down the line. So your troops, your troops are going to be affected by every single game that you play, and they're going to be changed further down the line for better or for worse. So we've got a special insert in the box that's going to change. Um, it's going to change up from how normal Undaunted does. It's the insert tracks how that campaign okay. plays. So you can uh, duck in and out of your story and you'll be able to track that experience through Stalingrad. But it's resettable. We have a legacy game that when you get to the end of it, your Stalingrad experience and narrative is your own. But when you finish, you can reset the game completely back to zero. You can swap sides and you can experience it again. And you can experience it again and make different decisions. Because yeah. so many people get to the end of a legacy game and they're like, oh, this one thing that happened halfway through, this impacted everything. What if this was different? Stalingrad lets you do that. Which is great. It's great. So when we can we expect Stalingrad? Stalingrad should be out October. Fingers crossed. Fingers crossed. October, if we can carry the darn things out of the warehouse, because they're so heavy. <laughs> there's so there's like three times the components in this than the other game. How many sort of cards are we looking at? Uh, I, I I don't quote me on this. I need to check the inside of the box that I'm not opening. But I think it's 300 tiles alone. It is. It's it's huge. Yeah. So no, that's fantastic. So ready. Thank you for your time this weekend. Hey, it's been a welcome. big weekend for you guys. Um, so thank you for that. Um, check out our other content from the convention. Um, we'll catch you next time. Take care.